There are lots of little tips and tricks and subtle little details that you need to consider when uh, tuning or adjusting cavity filters like this 900 megahertz uh, bandpass filter I have here. In today's video we're just going to cover one of them and that one is why you really want to use return loss instead of transmission loss or the bandpass characteristic when tuning the center frequency of the filter. Well, I've started off here just by making the transmission loss measurement by taking the tracking generator output going into the input of the filter and taking the output of the filter and going back into the spectrum analyzer. And we can see the bandpass characteristic. Now it's kind of flat, if you will, it's kind of shallow. It's difficult to see where the actual peak or the center frequency of the filter is. So we can actually stretch this plot out first by uh, changing the uh, let's see, the number of dB per division, kind of stretching that out. We go down to 1 dB per division. We get a little bit of a sharper peak. It's a little bit easier to see now as we tune this filter back and forth. But, but even so, it's still, you know, fairly broad. I'm looking at a 100 megahertz span here for this 900 megahertz filter. Now, ideally, we'd want to you know, kind of tune it with a narrower span so we can get a finer uh, idea of what's going on with the filter. But even at a 20 megahertz span here now, you can see that that filter is pretty flat, if you will, pretty shallow. It's very difficult to determine right where that peak is. But if we use the return loss measurement, we can actually de determine that much more precisely. Now, some analyzers have a directional coupler built in to measure return loss automatically. This one does not, so I'm using an external directional coupler here. I've terminated the output of our filter with a 50 ohm load connected the spectrum analyzer input to the coupled port on the directional coupler, connected the tracking generator output to the out port of the coupler, and the in port of the coupler is connected to the filter. So the idea is any energy that's reflected back from the filter input is now going to be coupled to the output and be measured. So obviously the ideal case is not getting any energy reflected back, and that's indicated by the minimum here on our return loss plot. Now this is the same 20 megahertz span that I showed earlier with the transmission loss measurement that had the very shallow filter response. It would be very difficult to see where the actual center frequency of the filter is because it was so shallow. It's very easy to see where that center frequency is now because of the very distinct uh, peak here in the return loss plot. I've even changed from 1 dB per division up to 5 dB per division because we have such a a sharp response here. We don't need to uh, expand that waveform so much to actually see where that peak is. And so now we can more precisely see where the exact center frequency of this filter is and then tune it uh, to where we want it to be uh, by using that minimum on the return loss plot. This is a much more precise way to set the center frequency of the filter than uh, using the uh, bandpass characteristic. So this is just one quick tip uh, in tuning the center frequency of these types of filters and how uh, useful a directional coupler can be or just or measuring the return loss can be in setting the center frequency. As I mentioned, there's a lot of other subtle little things uh, such as uh, being able to essentially adjust return loss of the filter by adjusting the coupling loops that are behind each of these connectors by loosening these screws and spinning the connectors around. Maybe a subject for another video. Uh, and then also how adjusting the return loss or the coupling factor of those input and output ports can also change the Q or bandpass shape uh, of the filter. So there's a lot of subtle little things to think about here, but this is probably the most significant one if you ever want to tune one of these filters is try to make that measurement using return loss instead of the transmission loss and you'll get a much more precise measurement of where the exact center frequency is. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so and tell your friends. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.